We've already established how to select an efficient portfolio. That portfolio has got the highest possible expected return for some given level of risk. Next what we need to do is to establish which portfolios are actually chosen by investors. So when we do efficient portfolio selection we detail a number of different portfolios that are optimal in the sense of the highest expected return per unit of risk. Now what we need to do is to choose amongst those many portfolios which portfolio is the best for the particular investor at hand. So it turns out that in order to do this we need to know something about risk aversion. Risk aversion is the investor's preference for risk. Sometimes we refer to risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is the inverse of risk aversion. So a person that is very risk averse has a very low tolerance for risk. A person that has um, a high tolerance for risk has low risk inversion. So we're going to use the concept of risk aversion to select a portfolio that is not just efficient but is optimal for the particular individual. Now you can imagine now that um, different individuals have different tastes for risk. For example somebody on uh, fixed income uh, perhaps uh, retired has probably a high uh, risk aversion. So that portfolio would have lower volatility than perhaps somebody just starting out in their career uh, who has many years to retirement and that person would be more willing um, to take on riskier investments. Now let me emphasize here that we assume that everybody is risk averse. If you're willing to take on riskier investments that simply means that you are risk averse but um, you're more tolerant to taking on higher risk investments. The person on the fixed income perhaps is not that tolerant because they cannot afford to take a large loss which might be a result of taking a risky portfolio. So risk aversion is the key here and there's many different ways to determine an investor's risk aversion. Really uh, risk aversion is within the framework of utility theory. So everybody has got a particular utility function and one of the parameters of that utility function is the parameter of relative risk aversion. Now of course the problem here is what is the utility function? And there are courses that you can take in terms of decision theory where part of that course is to determine a person's risk aversion. So by a series of questions um, a researcher can deduce approximately what the risk aversion is for the particular investor. In finance often what we do is to um, put it a little differently. So an investor might be asked what sort of risk are you willing to take in terms of portfolio volatility? So often in portfolio selection the investor will say well I'm willing to take 15 percent standard deviation on an annual basis. What sort of portfolio does this imply for me? So um, I think that's perhaps the most logical way to proceed. But let's think about uh, the mean standard deviation uh, analysis and what this actually means in terms of uh, portfolio choice. We developed in previous clips this idea that we would trade off uh, risk and return in an efficient manner and with many assets we'll get a parabola. And the parabola is in um, expected return on the y-axis and standard deviation on the x-axis space. It's a parabola and we only really care about the upward sloping portion of that parabola. Those portfolios represent the maximum possible expected return per unit of risk. The whole parabola represents the set of minimum variance portfolios. So only the positively sloped portion represents efficient portfolios. And this means that if you take on extra risk in terms of standard deviation you are rewarded 
in terms of extra expected return. So the positively slow portion of this frontier is exactly what we would think from intuition should characterize the portfolio choice. You take on more risk, you get a higher expected return. So we will work there from the minimum risk point, which is sometimes called the minimum variance or minimum standard deviation portfolio, all the way out to portfolios that take on um, perhaps an extraordinary amount of, of risk. Now the question is, which portfolio is optimal? Well, a simple way of doing it, as I said, would be um, given that the investor has a taste for 15% standard deviation, what is the portfolio? And we could read the weights of that portfolio right out of a standard mean variance analysis. In terms of framing it in, in, in the context of risk aversion, we appeal to uh, material that you've already learned in, I guess, the microeconomics course in terms of indifference curves. So there'll be a series of indifference curves that characterize an investor's preferences. Now, if those indifference curves are very steeply sloped, that implies that in order to get the investor to take on a little more risk in terms of standard deviation, the expected return jump has to be quite large. So to take on a little bit more standard deviation, you have to have associated with it a very large expected reward. So those are steeply sloped indifference curves. And the optimal point in terms of the tangency with the minimum variance frontier will probably be very close to the minimum variance, the global minimum variance point. So the person that's got this very steep trade-off between risk and return will choose portfolios, efficient portfolios, that have very low standard deviation. Now the other person might have more tolerance for risk. That means that to get this person to take on a little extra standard deviation, this person doesn't require a huge reward in terms of expected return. There must be a reward, but it doesn't have to be large. So risk aversion says that if you take on more risk, there must be extra expected return. And what we're talking about is how much extra expected return. So this investor's indifference curves are more flat. They're still uh, sloping the, um, the upward way, but they're a little more flat. And this suggests that the tangency point should be in the region where standard deviation is larger. So we can see that we can use the same tools that we used in, in microeconomics to derive um, the optimal portfolio for a particular individual. As I said, there's a, I guess a difference in, in naming convention. We can do efficient portfolios using a mathematical program that I uh, referred to as a, a nonlinear quadratic program. This gives us a set of thousands of portfolio that are efficient in the sense of getting the maximum possible expected return per unit of standard deviation. The next step is to determine which one of these thousand portfolios is optimal for the particular investor. And each investor could be different in this case. So we need the tools of indifference analysis or we could do it the more direct way by choosing just a standard deviation. If we do this, we hit the optimal portfolio, the portfolio that is best for that particular investor.